May 25th. Um, we're going to begin this evening, as I think Jackie just said, with an executive session, which will last about a half an hour, and we will come back, um, we'll recess then, or come back at seven. It doesn't exactly say that on the agenda. Um, but I move that the select board enter into executive session under MGL chapter 30A, section 21-2 to conduct strategy in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel regarding employment contract between the town of Wenham and Ryan Ferrara, and to include Tom Younger, our interim TA, and Catherine Tinsley, our recording secretary, um, in, in this meeting as well. We, as I said, we will return to open session um, at approximately seven o'clock. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Gary, Gary seconds. Uh, I'll roll call. Diane? Yes. Gary? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Okay. So, well, Tom, perhaps you can give us a little update on what's happening? Sure. I just want to make sure everyone's out because I'm still seeing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to take me a little getting used to. She's very loud on my computer. She's very loud on mine too. I keep thinking who's in who's in the meeting. So just let us know, Jackie. Catherine, it looks like everyone is in, so whenever you're ready. Okay, well, we'll get started. Um, so welcome everyone from the public who's here. Sorry if we um, asked everyone to take a little bit of a recess. Um, we have been in executive session and we are now um, returning to open session at 7.05. Um, so we will continue the select board meeting from May, for May 25th, 2021. And as always, and I'm going to speak slowly, so if anyone wants to put their name in the chat, we will start with public input. If there's anyone who would like to um, make a statement or ask a question um, tonight, you can uh, say so in the chat and we will call on you. I Nobody in the chat. I'm going to give it 30 more seconds, but although that seems like a long time. But I had a comment once uh, recently that I was going too fast. Uh, people didn't have a chance to even find the chat function. <laughs> but I think maybe we're done. Is there anyone in the chat, Jackie? No. Okay. So we'll move on on the agenda. Um, the next agenda item are announcements, and uh, I believe Tom, you have those. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, first announcement is coming up on Memorial Day ceremonies on Monday, May 31st. Uh, the two sessions are at 1015 at Cheeseman Field at Pingree Park. And the next one would be 11 a.m. at Veterans Memorial at the corner of Arbor Street and Main Street. Services are being recorded and shared in social media for those who are unable to participate in person. Uh, our town government study committee, the three to five uh, select board uh, member subcommittee is having their community input meeting on Thursday, May 27th. That's this week at seven o'clock. And you may watch it via Zoom. Please go on to wenhamma.gov to review the committee's work to date. Uh, we're coming down to close to the deadline for rain barrels that are available for purchase. Wenham residents receive a 50% discount. Uh, our town through the Great American Rain Barrel is excited to offer a hundred barrels, first come first served. And from my understanding, we still have some available to residents at half price for $30 to $4 and 50 cents each, 70% uh, off retail. Uh, residents must order by June 10th at greatamericanrainbarrel.com slash community slash Pickup is on Saturday, June 19th, 8 to 12 um, at the Wenham DPW garage. 
and you may contact our water department at 978-468-5520, extension 6, with any questions. Uh, it's that time of year where we have board and committee openings. You may submit your interest in serving through our appointments request Google form found at wenham.gov slash volunteer by sending an email to the attention of the select board at admin at wenhammay.gov. Uh, number of boards and committees, I'll just go through them again. Uh, the Affordable Housing Trust has three openings for two year terms. Audit Committee has three openings for a one year term. Uh, the Board of Registrars, the Cemetery Commissioners and the Community Preservation Committee each have one opening for a three year term. Uh, the Conservation Commission has three openings for a three year term. Council and Aging Board has four openings for a three year term. Uh, the Finance Advisory Committee and also the Community Access Committee both have two openings for three year terms. The Hamilton Wenham Cultural Council, one opening for a three year term. The Historic District Commission has three openings for a three year term. Iron Rail Commission just has the one opening for a two year term. Our Open Space and Recreation Committee has seven openings, all for one year terms. The Veterans Committee has four openings. One of them is to fill a vacant slot for a one year term and then other three are three year terms. Our Human Rights Committee has one opening for a three year term. The Wish Committee has three openings, one for a vacant term for one year and two for three years. And our Zoning Board of Appeals has one opening for a three year term and three associate member openings for a staggered terms. Letters have been sent to all incumbents and renewal requests are due by June 1st. If I could just um, put a bullet on that last point that you made, it's really important, um, Tom, thank you for that. Yeah. So uh, as is our custom and as our policy, current policy, um, everyone who is serving, currently serving on a border committee whose term is up has received this letter that is mentioned on the bottom of the screen, asking them if they wish to um, be reappointed or, or not. Um, so those um, letters of reappointment or interest are due on June 1st, as well as any open positions um, that exist. Um, so we, we're going to try to keep to that date if we can. Um, and and we'll begin, we'll begin our process, uh, hopefully a few weeks after that of making. So please get back. If you've received an email, please respond to it. I guess that's my, that's my message. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Okay. Uh, next to reports, and I think I'll start off with mine. Uh, first, a uh, couple updates from Beacon Hill. Uh, first, regarding, um, COVID activities and the end of the state of emergency on June 15th. Uh, today, uh, Governor Baker had filed legislation to extend Zoom meetings uh, through September 1st. Uh, have not seen the legislation yet because the question that we discussed here late this afternoon is whether it mandates Zoom meetings or it's optional for Zoom meetings. Uh, so we'd have to see that because if certain boards want to have uh, public meetings, we don't know if it's allowed under this or not. So we have to see what the wording is. Uh, basically, the extension, according to the governor, is to allow the legislators to look at a more permanent decision regarding Zoom meetings. Uh, I know a lot of communities have liked it so far. Um, allowing it for, in some cases, greater access to residents for um, viewing meetings. But that will be going on, that discussion will be going on during the summer. But I'm expecting at least the temporary extension to probably go through reasonably quickly. The other items he had in the bill don't normally relate uh, to um, Wedham. One of them is the expediting the uh, permitting for outdoor services and take out alcohol. Uh, we don't have that here. So uh, that's, no, that's no relation to us, but a lot of the other communities do. And the other is voting by mail and 
electronic signature for nomination papers, which I'm sure Diane is going to be uh, dealing with that. Uh, and we'll be seeing how that goes through and how that affects um, town clerks and such going. But the main thing for us is the Zoom meetings to determine where we're going uh, in the future because effectively June 15th, that portion of the uh, state of emergency goes away. If the board, if I can interject here too, if, if the board agrees and thinks that uh, at least the ability to um, continue with Zoom is something that we'd like to see the legislation move forward. Um, we've been asked, all of us have been asked by the Mass Municipal Association to um, contact our legislators. I was thinking it might be worthwhile to just for, um, for us, and I'm happy to pen it, a short email. Uh, I know Bruce and Brad, you know, would support us uh, no matter what we said, but I think it might be useful to pen a short uh, email to them voicing um, support of at least uh, ext at least extending the, the Zoom meetings through September. Is that okay with you guys? Sounds good to me. How about you, Diane? Definitely. Okay. So I, I'll, I'll do that and get that off soon. Thank you, Mr. Um uh, Regarding the recall legislation, um, as of today and as, at least through June 22nd, a hearing has not been scheduled yet with the Joint Commi Committee on Election Laws. I'll just keep updating you on a weekly basis because when they do uh, schedule it, um, my assumption is that they will be taking both written and video um, support for the bill and I will make sure the board is updated and ready to present such when that comes up. Uh, the last item on Beacon Hill uh, and the Video conference is tomorrow, but it really probably doesn't affect a whole lot of Wenham. Is the Alcohol Beverage Control Commission is having an advisory video meeting regarding the end of COVID related restrictions, though that was scheduled before the governor filed his legislation to extend uh, basically the outdoor dining aspects of it. Uh, I'll probably go on for a few minutes to see if anything comes up that could relate to Wenham, but I don't believe there's going to be much of anything at all that will. Now from Beacon Hill to Capitol Hill, uh, we received notice from Congressman Moulton, and I'll be sharing this uh, with the board and actually our departments. Uh, he's now submitting a list of all grants that uh, federal grants that we could be possibly applying for uh, in the early summer of 2021. So we'll be reviewing that with our team to see if there's something here that we should be uh, pursuing because if there is money out there, I think it's a good opportunity for us to be included in anything uh, for projects for our community. Um, next from Capitol Hill, we received today a little more notice from the Department of the Treasury about uh, relief funds, at least one aspect of it. Um, they will be submitting to Wenham, or actually all the communities in the state, but we're speaking about Wenham, uh, within a couple of weeks, uh, our first share of the opera funds, which total was 552,441, but it is going to be in two payments, one, probably in middle of June and the second one a year later. And it's approximately about $276,000 in each share. And it's based on our population and they based it on 5,278. Uh, the money will go to the state and then to Wenham and it will be distributed like our local aid amounts. Uh, the three things that we basically could utilize it on uh, that's town related is replacement of lost revenue. So items that we had budgeted for in our budget, previous budget that did not come in at that amount, uh, we could use it to replace the lost revenue. Two, any COVID-19 expenditures that we have not been able to uh, receive funding for. And three, the investments in sewerage, water and broadband infrastructure. 
and uh, I would work with uh, water department uh, to determine if there's any literally shovel ready projects uh, that the funds could be utilized. Uh, and also I would like to look into if there, if there's clarification on the word sewage, we do not have sewers, we have septic. And whether some of that could be used on any septic issues that maybe uh, the town has on within their properties uh, on that, but that's one thing I would like to look into on that. And I'll keep the board updated, uh, but it's expected those funds will be coming down to us in the next uh, few weeks. Two other items, and uh, one of them, well, they're both good news, uh, but one, and I believe the board is aware, uh, our planning coordinator, uh, Margaret Hoffman, just notified us yesterday that um, the Department of Housing and Community Development District notified us that one of them has surpassed a 10% number uh, for affordable housing. So we are officially at 12.32% uh, based on the Maplewood project going forward. Uh, we will have this designation on February 2022. Uh, unless Maplewood pulls a building permit before that. Once the building permit is issued and work commences, we can keep those 45 units on our account. So that's a good news for the community that we have reached uh, the threshold, but it's also good news that we are increasing our share of affordable housing in our community. Mm -hmm. And lastly, and this is just more uh, information regarding our website uh, is tomorrow on Thursday morning after our, our general department head meeting, uh, Jackie is going to do training for update training for any department head or staff member who'd like a refresher course in updating the town website. Uh, and that she will be working with them and that's about an hour for training. And uh, that will begin at 11 a.m. And thank you, Jackie, uh, for providing that training. Uh, more and more, the website is a great way of getting communication out to our residents. And the better informed and the better trained our team is, uh, the more information we can provide uh, for the town. So I would like to uh, thank uh, the board, thank our residents for watching tonight. And I believe uh, Mary Beth might be the next one up, Met Catherine. Yes, and I believe I saw her on a call. Mary Beth. Good evening, everyone. Hi. Good evening. So this is, um, you may or may not have seen this, this charts like this on the town website. They're on the COVID-19 page. I've been preparing them for quite a while now. Um, the most recent one, Jackie, I don't know if that slide, I don't know if it's just my view or whether the most recent, I don't know if you can see the most recent, which is fi uh, 520. And the yes, there it is. Yeah, we can see that. Um, Hamilton remains in the gray, and the really exciting thing is, in the last seven days, zero new cases. The last new case was back on five ten, so we can expect that we will remain in the gray um, when this week's data comes out. Because again, as I've said on numerous occasions, it's retrospective, so that's really fantastic news. Um, and other fantastic news, as we discussed last week, uh, Wenham is part of the newly established Greater Cape Ann Community Collaborative for Vaccine, which will provide the opportunity for vaccinators to address more small groups. Um, I was speaking with my colleague from Hamilton, Rachel Lee. She said we could go to you know, churches and talk with them about vaccine and provide vaccine right there. We could go to a baseball game and provide vaccine to anybody who's there and looking for it. So really getting down to the people who are still looking for vaccine. And along those lines, there will be Pfizer vaccine available for anyone age 12 and up tomorrow at the Hamilton Wenham High School between 2 and 4 p.m. We'll be vaccinating and if you look at the COVID-19 webpage, the very top item right now on the town COVID-19 webpage has the link to how to sign up and get an appointment. Walk-ins will also be accepted. 
And again, that's the Pfizer vaccine. So dose number one will be tomorrow. Dose number two will be June the 16th, which also happens to be the last day of school for Hamilton one and so get them before they're on summer vacation. Um, and I think that's really all I have in terms of an update. We've talked last week about how all of the restrictions are sunsetting as of this Saturday. And um, these are all really exciting developments. Do any of you have any questions or concerns? Not for me, I'm all set, thank you. Gary or Diane? Good. Well, with your indulgence, there's also a Zoom meeting for the grade five parents who are moving oh. up middle school. Wow. So I'm gonna wish you all well and I'll see you again soon. All right. Thank Thanks, you, Mary Beth. Beth. Thank you, Mary Beth. Bye-bye. Um, and while we're, I guess the, this can be my chair's report. I don't really have uh, anything else to say right now, although I, I would mention in case I forget later um, that the select board is having a joint meeting with the Board of Health this Thursday, the 27th. I believe it's at 5.30 p.m. And the, um, the agenda item is to discuss the um, reopening of town hall. So just as a point of information. Uh, okay, uh, Diane or Gary, do you have any reports that you would like to make? I have a couple or if Diane wants to go first. Nope, I don't have anything. It's all you tonight. Then I've got just a couple of quick ones, uh, Catherine. Sure. All right. So uh, last Saturday was pretty busy. Uh, I'd like to say thank you to uh, Troop 28 Boy Scouts and Troop and Pack 28 Cub Scouts as they assisted the uh, cemetery commission in replacing 500 uh, veterans flags at the uh, cemeteries. We got that done in uh, just under an hour. So that was uh, quite an effort, 500 <laughs> flags in an hour. So uh, thank you to the, as always to Scoutmaster Matt Bailey on that. And the second item on Saturday was uh, hopefully a lot of people I saw get out there, but congratulations to the uh, Hamilton Wenham Regional High School seniors graduating here soon. They had their automobile parade ride down Route 1A from the high school down to the center of Wenham through Hamilton. So we need to say uh, thank you to the uh, fire department, police department that provide the escorts and uh, thanks to everyone for turning out for that as well. That's all I got. Okay, those are great. Thank you so much, Gary. Um, okay, we'll move then on to uh, our next item which is the consent agenda. And I think you have that, Diane. I do. I'd like to move, am I gonna read it? I was enjoying Gary's. I'd like to move to approve all the items in the consent agenda, which include the open session minutes from May 4th, 20, but I believe it's May 5th, 2021. When I look at the minutes, it says May 5th. Can you just confirm? Hmm. Catherine Tinsley? Yeah, be the yeah, fifth. I'm looking. Should... Yeah. It was the 5th because we met on okay. Wednesday that week, right? No, we met on Wednesday the 19th. Yeah, yeah. that was a different one. This one's before so me. So this is May 4th. Yeah. It was May 4th because the minutes yes. say May 5th. I'll change that. Thank you. Yeah, so okay. May 5th is correct because the 1st was Saturday, the town meeting. So Tuesday was the 5th. Four. Okay. So I'd like to move yeah. to approve all the items in the consent agenda, which include the open session minutes from Tuesday, May 5th, 2021. Okay, I'm sorry to back up. I, I'm looking at my calendar for May 2021 and the Tuesday is May 4th. Am I looking at that wrong? The town meeting was the first. Yeah, that is correct, sorry. So this- Gary, yeah, you're confusing me. <laughs> so, now, so I'm gonna make a motion to approve all the items in the consent agenda, including <laughs> the open session minutes from May 4th, 2021, assuming that Catherine T will fix that date. I will, thank you. Is there a second on that motion? Second. Are there any other comments or corrections? If not, Diane, do you wanna call the vote? And roll call? Sure. Gary? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Diane? Yes. How fun okay. was that? I, I know, really, right? Wow. Um, Letter B um, under first thing under new business is a discussion of the community house Sundays and Patton Park request. 
Um, it's Diane's agenda item. I'm not sure uh, if Melissa is here to speak to it, but I'll turn it to you, Diane. Um, so the community house has asked us, is deciding to return with their um, Sunday concerts, the free concerts in the park on Sunday, and are asking us to um, sponsor again for a thousand dollars, which we've done in the past. So I think it's a great idea, but is Melissa here to talk about it? Maybe yes, Diane. Melissa is here. Oh, great. Let's ask Melissa to join us. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Awesome. Good evening, everyone. Hi to Tom and Gary. And hello again to Catherine, <laughs> Diane, Jackie. Congratulations on your successful campaigns uh, for select women, select board members. Thank you. I'm tonight to talk about the 20th season of the free concerts in Patton Park. So for 20 years, uh, the summer concerts have been a mainstay, always open, free to the public in Patton Park. And for about the last 13 years or so, the community house has been the home for those free concert series. And together with our committee, we work really hard to fund those series or fund those concerts every year. <clears throat> So like Diane mentioned for several years prior to our pause last year, due to the pandemic, the Wenham Select Board has generously provided a sponsorship to allow those free concerts to be possible. <clears throat> for those of you who may not be familiar with the Community House, the Community House is the community center for both towns of Hamilton and Wenham and will be celebrating its 100th anniversary this year in 2021. Uh, for those 100 years, we've provided arts, culture, social, and community building events for all ages um, since our, our establishment in 1921. So we know because of COVID <clears throat> that how important it really is for people to connect within their community and with each other. Um, and we've certainly relearned that uh, through COVID um, it's just been such an amazing eye opener this year, how much we all have yearned to be together, despite all these virtual opportunities for us to do that. There truly is no replacement for doing that in person and doing that with your community. And I think that is what is so wonderful about the summer concert series is we're able to do that for so many people. And I think with confidence and with the support of the boards of health, we are confident that we can do that safely this summer. Uh, we've delayed our start. So we'll be starting in July, July 12th, um, and going much further into August. Um, we made that decision long ago to give us even more confidence in that safety factor. And we're optimistic with the governor's change and opening up um, businesses and activities much further that um, that was a wise decision for us. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank everyone in the town of Hamilton for their recent support at town meeting for the $50,000 Community Preservation Act in support of the community house's recent restoration project. Um, as we're just about to go public with our 100th anniversary campaign, it is very timely that that support comes in to give us a boost and a lift out of the pandemic and into more positive days ahead. So, Thank you so much for your time and thank you in advance for your consideration of our request. Thank you, Melissa. Should I read the motion before we continue? Well, let's see if there are any questions for Melissa first, if we, that's okay. I, I tend to like to um, have a little bit of discussion in case we decide we would want to um, amend mm -hmm. this draft motion. So okay. if there are no questions, is, is there any, are there any comments, Gary? Do you have thoughts on this topic? I mean, this is a very popular and a great uh, event or a series of events each year, well attended. So I'm fully in support of the donation here. Um, yeah, I, I'm having trouble believing it's been 20 years that <laughs> you've been attending these and you've been having them. Um, it's a great, it's a great program. And I would be fully supportive of that, uh, that donation as well. Look forward to the to seeing what the program is, the series is. So, right. Diane, if you have so 
I'd like to move to approve $1,000 for the Sundays in Patton Park program for the fiscal year 2021 from a line as determined by the finance director. I'll second that. Uh, we'll second it. Roll. Yeah. All right, no comments. Gary? Yes. Uh, Catherine? Yes. I as well. Thank you. Thank hey, you for thanks, coming. Thank you, Melissa, for joining us. Thank you. Good My luck. pleasure, Dave. Thank you. Be well. You too. You as well. Okay. I it it is really fun to be talking about. Um, it's a little scary to me, but a little fun to be talking about um, back about community activities. And we have another one here. Um, new business is a, a use of Pingree Park. And Diane, you're the social director. I guess I am. <laughs> That's always been my dream. <laughs> so I believe that the uh, Buker School wants to do a activity day for the fifth graders before they move up to middle school. And they're asking for permission from Pingree Park. And I'm wondering if anyone from the Buker School would be here. Hi. Um, I'm here. Can you guys see me and hear me? Allison Hawkins. Hi, Allison. Hi. I didn't Tell us about what you're going to do. Sure. So we, I'm, I'm Allison Hawkins. I'm a, a parent of a fifth grader at Buker. And traditionally, I'm sure if you guys have ever gone through this, uh, there's a little moving up ceremony. There's like activities. There's usually field trips. So this year, we are um, wondering if we can do a walking field trip from Buker School to Pingree Park. Um, and then use the park to set up games and use the playground equipment and bring a bag lunch um, between the hours of 10 and 2. Um, and we kind of bring, you know, it's all kind of bringing a few tables to set up, probably set apart from the playground equipment, maybe under the trees near closer to the tennis courts. Um, obviously carry out all our own trash. Someone's gonna bring a big pop-up trash can so the kids can just use that for rubbish. And um, we're also gonna have an ice cream truck drive through. So that's a separate arrangement that I'm working with the, with, um, the health inspector, Bobby Cody out of Marblehead on that. So that's it. So it's about 38 kids, uh, teachers and maybe 20 parents. And we are asking, um, you know, we really appreciate your consideration to let us use the park for those several hours. So I just have one quick question on that one. Are you um, asking for exclusive use of the park? Or are you asking us to n not have it, let anyone else into the park? Oh, no, no, 100%. And that's not necessarily a problem. I just want to yeah. understand. The way, and when I spoke to Jackie Bresnahan, who's been so great, and we had a quick chat, a correspondence over email with her and the principal, was that lots of people come and ask for use of Pingree Park. Mm -hmm. And maybe some events might be more somber, such as memorial services and this and that. And so the scheduling of kind of the type of events is really sensitive, which is something I hadn't even considered, which I think is great to kind of make sure that that's not a conflict or, you know what I mean? It's yep. kind of the only park. And these will be 40 kids running around, enjoying the last gasps of true childhood before middle school. <laughs> I have no other questions, Gary or Diane. Questions? Here. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, there. All right. So okay. I'll read the motion. Great. Because I, I think it's a great idea. I move that we approve the board of the select board approves the use of Pingree Park on Friday, June 11th with a rain date of Monday, June 14th from 10 a.m. to 2, pending the receipt of a liability insurance from the Buker School with the town listed as additionally insured for the fifth grade activity day. Gary seconds the motion. Okay. Roll call, Catherine. Um, oh, Jackie, did you yeah. have something? I just wanted to just, can I I'm make sorry. a small addition? Sure. So I just wanted to let you know, so Allison is a member of the parent group and I know that um, I just wanna make sure folks knew that the, um, the principal of the Buker school is also a part of this request. So we are working directly with the school um, and have their field trip insurance and everything of that nature um, documented. So I just wanted to make sure, you know, this is not just a parent group, it's also coming from the Buker principal. Good to know, we probably should have asked that. That was good. I guess I just assumed it, but good, good to have it confirmed. 
Um, Tom. And Tom, yeah, Tom. Sorry, Kathy. Something, Tom. Thank That's you. okay. Yeah, I'm using the hand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just a question for Allison. Uh, is this this the first time, correct? You've done this? Um, officially, I believe, yes. Okay, so this may be generally an annual event if it works out well coming back before the board. I mean, your child will be moving on, but it's yeah. like... Um, it quite possibly could be. Normally we fundraise, just to give you guys a bigger picture. Normally we fundraise throughout the year for a big field trip somewhere special um, off-site, like Project Adventure used to be at Moraine Farm and things like that. Um, but this year, fundraising was so limited, although we did a plant sale and I went before the Board of Health to request permission for that. And we had an incredible success um, with that. So we raised money to sort of, but, but yeah, I mean, it could be an annual thing, um, but obviously pending, you know, sure. town permission. No, I'm just saying that because when my son was that age, they did the same thing at their local park and I believe it became an annual thing, but... You know, he's now 27, so oh, I know, it's so sweet. <laughs> and, you know, very successful. Cutler's doing something. Winthrop, all the schools do something, and they're a little bit envious that we are actually kind of doing something. Although Winthrop might go over to Patton because they have such a symbiosis with with Patton. But um, yeah, thank you. Okay, so mm -hmm. we have a motion. Did we have a second? I'm sorry, I'm losing mm -hmm. my. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we didn't vote yet. We didn't fully vote yet. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Diane. <laughs> I'm sorry. I vote yes. Catherine? Yes. Gary? Yes. Great. Good go. luck. Have fun. Thank you so Try much. Thanks, Select Board. And thank you yeah. so much to Jackie, who's just so helpful and organized and professional. You all are incredible. So thank you very much. Thanks. We'll have to drop no, I'm going to go to bed and dinner. Otherwise, I would hang here longer. This oh, quite great. all right. <laughs> We'd be doing dinner too if we had a I, I know, I know. And I just <laughs> love the Zoom that it's great to like get a, you know, I, I think it's great, but good job, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Allison. Thank you so much. Okay, um, next on our agenda, we have um, a discussion of the North Shore IT Collaborative Memorandum of Understanding. And that's you, Gary. Yes, so North Shore Regional Collaborative will allow us to. Uh, obtain uh, consulting information and technical assistance. And I think uh, in the informational technology area, which we, uh, with a small town hall, don't have anyone that uh, full-time on that business. So I think we have an update from Jackie and uh, perhaps presentation. Is Brian on tonight, Brian Luther? Um, thank you, yep, Gary. I'm, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm here and I'm, I'm joined by uh, Colby Cousins, the, uh, the IT director and vendors right. as well. Welcome, uh, Colby and Brian. Thank you. Let's go first and then Jackie can update after. Um, well, Gary, if, if you don't mind, can I go just ahead. give a brief introduction? Because I know you've maybe heard from this from Tom, but I just want to make sure Catherine and Diane um, have a full loop in. So this is a project we've been working on for some months, and I want to give a lot of credit to Nikki Roebuck, who's been pulling the weight on this um, and only, you know, couldn't be here tonight because she's taken her new position. Um, and I want to introduce Brian from MAPC and Colby from the town of Danvers because they have been incredible resources for the collaborative on this, um, especially given our lack of IT knowledge. Um, so I just want to make sure that folks know this is something we've been working on for a while operationally. And it's something that it's how we thought about our IT budget when we put our budget forward to town meeting. And I know Catherine and Diane, you missed that part of the FY21, uh, excuse me, FY22 budget process. Um, but I just wanna make sure you're both aware that this is um, going forward with this regional collaborative is how we address the FY22 IT budget. Um, so we did fund for our um, fee that's a part of the collaborative about $4,000 and change for the management and oversight. Um, so I just wanted to give that brief financial uh, aspect of it before introducing Brian and Colby and thanking them for all of their hard work to get us to this point and to um, thank them for coming tonight as well. Thanks for the background, Jackie. Thank you. And thank Jackie. you for coming, Brian and Colby. Good to be here. Thank you for having us. It's a lot yeah, easier to be here when we're when we're here rather than there. <laughs> yes, thank you for having a remote meeting. We appreciate that. <laughs> we hear that a lot. 
Um, yeah, and Colby, if you don't mind, I, I can I can start. Um, so sure. we don't really have much of a you know slides or anything like a normal presentation, but I thought it would be uh, you know just really um, you know useful to give a, just a brief overview of what we've been working on and sort of where we're going for the first fiscal year of this of this collaborative and and uh, you know yeah and like like Jackie said like Mickey's been really great working with us. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's as from MAPC, um, you know, I've been able to help facilitate this. Colby is more of the, uh, the brains and the technical knowledge. Um, but uh, just from, from my standpoint, it's really rare to see a collaborative come together like this, especially with, with seven towns. And, you know, I think it's a great opportunity to, you know, use it as a model for the region. Um, but so just wanted to go through just a little bit of what, um, you know, of an overview of the, of the program, what we're looking at in the first fiscal year. So, um, so among also with Wenham, you know, is is the participating com uh, communities are Topsfield, Hamilton, Manchester, Middleton, Essex, and then the lead municipality being Danvers. Um, we've, you know, it, like like uh, like Jackie also said before, the base assessment is about four thousand dollars, and what that does is 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 provide you the um, you know um, it provides you with the resource of you know, Colby's knowledge and the ability to work on the network and, and maintain infrastructure. So that, that, that time in the beginning, um, and, and one thing that I wanna point out too is so uh, the knowledge aspect of this and having a trusted resource to go to is something that a lot of small communities struggle with. You know, there's, there's plenty of projects and ideas that many people have, but they don't have necessarily the wherewithal to understand, um, you know, like we have a quote, what's this mean? What's what it should, what it should look like. And, and so, um, that's a really, that's a really, something really strong to have uh, as an asset in the beginning. Um, so for the first fiscal year, um, what we're looking to really do is focus on two, two main things. Um, one is, you know, familiarizing Colby with your, with your infrastructure, with your upcoming projects, with really what, um, you know, what is, what Wenin is facing, what they have, and then, you know, familiarizing himself with the network. And your assets, um, and then also for the region, we're looking to improve like our overall cybersecurity. Um, so that first four thousand dollars is going to be is going to be really um, useful in order to familiarize you know familiarize Kobe and start to standardize a lot of the network assets we have, um, and then also um, you know start to scope out what what those costs would be for improving cybersecurity. Um, and so. Um, that's so for the first I would like to pause if we have any if we have any questions um, right now but um, um, Cole, if you have anything to add to you can feel free to add. Uh, no, you did a you did a great job Brian uh, just I would just add that that fee um, goes towards about one hour of my time per week per municipality. So that's the amount of time we expect to focus on special projects and procurement and advisory services and that type of thing uh, across the collaborative. Okay, I, I think I'll have some questions, but I'm going to wait until the end. <laughs> Unless that was the end. Diane, I you want to go ahead? So can can I ask Jackie or Tom, is this instead of micro support or in addition to? So what this process will do um, is, so micro support group will remain our IT um, for our help desk at this time. Um, and what Colby will work on us with is addressing our cybersecurity needs, which are getting increasingly complex every year mm -hmm. um, start and then um, you know, we have a lot of projects such as our phone system really needs an upgrade. Um, we have recently done the change over to Microsoft 365, um, but we're going to need to, uh, you know, look at our servers again in the next few years. So this will allow us to utilize Colby's expertise when it comes to procurement. Um, and that comes from a place of not of the know-how of the procurement, but also because we're going to um, have some vendors as part of this collaborative that are on tap vendors. So like when someone needs cybersecurity or someone needs a phone system upgrade, we're going to have a list of vendors that have already been vetted. And there's going to be some more purchasing power for us as smaller communities. You know, you think of the communities in the collaborative, you have Essex, you have Hamilton, you have Wenham. As an individual municipality, our IT infrastructure is not so large that we can get a really good deal on anything. 
Um, but the goal of this project is that we'll all be interconnected, we'll have that support from one another, and we'll start to align our assets so that we can go out and make bigger purchases together and hopefully get long term uh, some cost savings from that and start to create backup systems for one another as well. Um, so my okay. group will still continue on. Um, but as we address larger infrastructure issues, we're going to hopefully begin to rely on the collaborative for that. Yeah, and I would add that we have a long-term goal of building a regional data center, a regional North Shore data center in Danvers and running fiber out to these surrounding communities, fiber optic cable out to the surrounding communities. So we'll have high-speed links into each of your respective communities and be able to host servers um, at a reduced cost, leveraging economies of scale uh, as we build out a, a larger data center for the region. That's a long term. So um, I just have a couple of questions, I guess. Maybe I'll jump in here. So if I'm under, this is by the way, um, it's been talked about for a little while. I, I even remember it from my past life, but it's great. This is an amazing collaboration. And it's something that, you know, as I said, has been talked about for a long time, but to see this actually happening um, is, I, I, I I think it's fantastic. I do have a couple of questions, of course. Um, and they mostly have to do with, well, so if I understand what you guys just said, and I'm sorry, because this may have been discussed at an earlier time and I wasn't around. Um, so the, the fee, the management fee that we're talking about is the fee for basically, I won't say technical support in terms of a help desk, but technical support in terms of, um, I think some of the things that you talked about, but general things that would be helpful to everyone, cybersecurity for one, which seems to be a big, is a big deal right now. Um, help with maybe deciding when or what kind of servers helping. So it's that kind of, uh, of a fee. Um, in addition to that, if we, would, if we needed to purchase any hardware, software, whatever it may be, um, that resides in Wenham, I'm assuming that we would be able to use that, the joint purchasing power that Jackie was just talking about, but those would be costs that we would bear because they're going to reside in Wenham. Then what I'm wondering is about, about is what kinds of costs might there be to Wenham for things that are not in Wenham, you know, beyond what we may need here? Because it talks about, uh, that Danvers will develop an operating budget for the collaborative. And I guess I'm just trying to understand what those line items might be in, a, in an operating budget for this. I don't know who, who maybe can answer that, if anyone. Yeah, so right now, so this is Colby. Uh, right now, the, the operating budget is pretty flat and, and it really just includes the advisory services that we talked mm -hmm. about here. But we could envision down the line um, maybe building in shared uh, personnel resources, like um, a financial person, someone to work with the fi uh, financial system that we share across the region. A lot of communities, larger communities have a, uh, like a munis person for their financial package. That's something we could talk about building in as a shared resource in, into the uh, collaborative in the future. None of those decisions would be made without a vote uh, of the collaborative and, the, and a consensus uh, among the, the, uh, the participating communities. But that language there left it open for us to approach those types of things in the future should they make sense to the collaborative. Colby, if I can add on as well. So I think, Catherine, to your point, I think that's a really good question. And I think the good thing about this MOU is it doesn't tie us to any projects with the collaborative. It gives us the opportunity to have the projects with the collaborative. And I think the way Nikki and I have been thinking about this is that we, you know, as part of the IT budget for this year, we've obviously made the transition to the Microsoft 365. We have our, you know, our proof point, our spam filter that we're purchasing for our emails. Um, we're looking at doing our upgrade to Civic Plus. So those are on our calendar. So we're going to try to function IT, though it's not the same dollar figure, you know, we typically talk about 10,000 plus for capital projects, 
but we're going to start creating a deeper five year plan for our capital infrastructure and that's something that we really have not had the know how to do in house. And with Colby's help, our goal is to develop that plan. So as we proceed into the fiscal 23 24 25 budget cycles, we know what are the upcoming projects between cybersecurity server storage maintenance potential additional help desk support. Um, our Wi Fi, as I think all three of you select board members know is not the greatest nope, means. Um, so we'll start kind of capital planning with IT so that when there are opportunities for us to do things that other communities are doing, it that, that MOU is already in place for us to collaborate on those projects as they are relevant to us. And I think it's just gonna give us greater capacity because we'll be able to steal from Colby's know-how, but <laughs> you know, pay for his time, but get his know-how um, as an IT full-time municipal professional. Whereas right now, we have a good help desk firm, but they were their only municipality. Everyone else that they have are private entities. And I think mm -hmm. there's a big difference in municipal IT than there is from business IT, just because we have different needs. And so this is a part of a longer term strategy for us to better, more holistically address our capital needs. So instead of you know coming to the board with a budget request in this year, and then next year it's this request, we're trying to better plan for our future and still start to take care of some of the business now. Um, and I think that this way we'll have this planning year with the collaborative so that we can start to really you know, plan for 23, 24, 25 through 27 in a more of a capital IT you know, five-year plan um, that mirrors our current capital improvement plan that we have for our, you know, our vehicle fleets and our other larger assets. Um, I appreciate the um, elaboration from both Colby and Jackie because um, I, I imagined or envisioned that's the way it would work. But quite frankly, in reading the, the MOU, at least the second point of it, it sort of sounded like, well, Danvers is going to create the budget and then people are going to vote on it. And as long as everybody votes on it, it's fine. So yes, we were going to get a say. But I think what I'm hearing is, yes, Danvers will it'll be Denver's budget. But I think, at least I hope what I'm hearing is that the process to, to getting to that budget, to the extent that it includes some things that it hasn't included before, will be a collaborative approach. So by the time you get to a budget, you, you've already gotten some input and the vote is not, you know, it's important and everyone has a vote and that's great, but it hasn't sort of been, you know, a top down, this is what we're doing, hope you like it kind of situation, which is kind of the way the wording is, but not at all the way you explained it. So I'm going yeah, with the explanation. <laughs> our vision is for it to be a very collaborative and cooperative process. And we want everyone to be happy and satisfied as part of this, this group, this collaborative that, we, uh, that we're entering into. Great. I, I have no more questions. Diane, anything else? No, I don't. So uh, one last one, Jackie, what's our uh, roadmap going forward on this as far as decision points? So um, we have this initial presentation tonight and included in the packet was the overview and the MOU, Ryan and from Colby. Um, many municipalities are, have already approved this or are going to be in the next couple of weeks. And I know we were planning to have a June one meeting, which I don't think we're having. So. Brian, this is sorry, new breaking news for you. Um, so we'll have this again for you. Your next meeting is um, June 8th. So we'll have the final, the MOU as presented tonight is the final version of the MOU. Um, so we'll have that as a potential as a potential vote and not just a review on June 8th. Um, at that point, I believe we're gonna be one of the last communities to sign on to the MOU. Um, but we wanted, you know, to catch you all up. You know, this has been a very operational process because IT is such an operational piece versus a policy piece. But so we wanted to make sure, and I really appreciate and want to thank Colby and Brian because they've been doing the heavy lifting with this collaborative and they've been balancing the needs and wants of a lot of municipalities, which is never easy. Um, but so I thank them for being here tonight and providing some additional background. Um, but it, unless you folks have um, questions that you'd like us to get answered in the next couple of weeks, um, I'll anticipate submitting to Tom for your vote for the June 8th agenda. All right, thank you, Jackie. And thank Great. you, Brian and Colby for being here tonight. Back yeah. to you, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And Jackie, sense. don't worry about June 8th. It doesn't, uh, MOU just have to take effect June 1st. So that's, you know, that's the date that makes me happy. So, I mean, July, July 1st, apologies. Okay, I was gonna say wait. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's great. 
we it's <laughs> nice to all be on the same page. I don't think there'll be, uh, I don't, I think we asked our questions and if we have any ones that pop up, we can, we have a week or so to get those answers. You okay. Always, uh, all right, for all your time. Great, thank you guys. Thank you, thank, and thank you. you, Jackie. Thank you. Um, okay, the next thing on our agenda is item E, which is a review and potential approval of Hamilton Wenham Library merit pay recommendations. Um, Gary has that. All right, so uh, the, the library, as we know, is a, a regional thing, but the uh, direct management uh, falls on the Wenham side currently. So the uh, Board of Selectmen or Select Board needs to uh, validate and approve the merit pay raises uh, for FY21. I believe uh, you have the, uh, uh, the format in the original packet and uh, Jackie updated us uh, with the actual numbers by email uh, earlier today, if you've seen those. But this is a, um, comes from the uh, library director with her recommendations as to the uh, percentage spread. I have one question. Um, I, I don't, I think hopefully this is an easy one that someone can answer. Um, so I understand this is new to the library with its new contract. Um, it, I'm, I'm wondering um, where the trustees fit in. Typically we don't really see much in the way of approvals from the library, certainly budget at the end because the trustees have you know, a lot of authority. So I'm just wondering where the trustees fit in this process of approving merit raises. Uh, uh, anybody? If I may, um, Jackie, so sure. trustees um, do the review along with Tom of the director. So mm -hmm. it's just the, so these are the director's recommendations for the staff. So um, based on the way the contract was negotiated, this is, a contract between the select board and the AFSCME for the library workers. So okay. the contract language reads, there's no um, approval from the trustees. Though knowing Kim, I've not directly had this conversation with her. Knowing her, I'm sure she's keeping the trustees in the loop because she's very communicative with them. But there's no, um, there will be, you know, their sign off on the payroll warrant when these are processed by the finance office in the library. But in terms of the contract between the select board and AFSCME, um, this is just a select board approval at this time. Okay, I understand. Um, note to self for the future, um, this board I think needs to talk a little bit about how we do merit pay and what we need to approve. Um, I'm not accustomed to seeing nor approving individual increases at, at any point, not that I'm, I mind it, but I think for the future, we've got this here, we're, you know, we're all set. But I think as we move forward with our goals or our whatever uh, policies, I mean, what, we might want to think about um, whether there's precedent anywhere else for seeing um, what, what people get for individuals with their names get for increases. But um, that's just a generic comment. I'm all set with this with this list as it is. Anything, Diane? No. Yeah, so I had the same idea, Catherine, that uh, in the larger sense, we need to look at the whole merit pay thing as mm -hmm. to uh, how the select board uh, is uh, involved in that. All right, yeah, so uh, I'll, yeah. I'll make the motion then. I move to approve the Hamilton Wendell Library merit raises as presented for FY21. Do I have a second? Second. Any further comment? Um, just maybe to refer to the, um, for the minutes that that refers to the uh, um, a memo of May 20th. Uh, is, that, is that true? May 19th. May 19th memo, right? Okay, yes, because the second one is May 19th. Yeah, right. just so that we can find it if we're ever looking for it again. But yeah, I'm all set to vote. All right. Then uh, Diane? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Gary, yes. Okay, great. Um, as I scroll through this evaluation, uh, one of my favorite things, CPA grants. 
Um, so just, <laughs> Jackie's laughing, just by way of background, I think every, I think folks, maybe the public doesn't know that every time um, town meeting grants um, CPA money to what would I call this non-municipal groups, um, a, a draft or a grant agreement um, is written by, by the staff and approved by the board, the select board. Um, and this agreement really, calls into any, uh, as written here, includes a lot of information. And um, it's a contract basically between the group that's receiving the money and, uh, and the town. Um, if for some reason that grant is not a, a complied with, um, then the grant money is not issued. The, the two that we have tonight, and I'm gonna ask Jackie for an overall, cause we're just um, talking about these tonight, but we have, well, the Wenham Museum one is a little unusual, but these two are, are not the Wenham Museum, but the um, community house. These grant agreements look really familiar. So we've been doing grant agreements for the community house and the Wenham Museum for a number of years. So the language to me looked um, pretty standard, but with a few, looks like ministerial changes, but I'll ask if there's someone um, on the panel that wants to just give an overview for folks that may not have spent a lot of time on these agreements before. I don't know who that is. Is that Jackie? Is it Tom? Is it someone else? It is. It is I. Yeah. Uh, I probably would have guessed again. that. Um, yeah. So uh, only because I do work with the CPC um, and this is now a requirement that they make in their recommendations to town meeting. Um, so these are both um, from KP Law. They've both been reviewed uh, as the pro forma agreements uh, for this is regarding both F and G. Um, I will say that they both have a 29 year historic preservation restriction attached as well, uh, based on the votes of town meeting, the 29 year restriction being the highest restriction you can do uh, as a municipality with a nonprofit without getting mass historic commission approval and legislature and it's a much more uh, cumbersome process. Um, we have had 29 year restrictions with the one in museum before so this would just be a revised 29 year restriction. Um, it's about five years since our last 29 year restriction so we're gaining, you know, about another four or five years on um, the historic preservation of the museum in particular. Um, so this takes into account um, our typical grant agreement language, as well as the exact language of the motion of the vote of town meeting. For the Wenham Museum, you may recall, this is a roughly $47,000 and change project for their HVAC. Um, so the, this grant agreement would limit them to the use of that. And it would also provide them some start dates of when they have to commence and end the work by. And that's something we've been including the last couple of years to make sure that people are following through with the money in a timely manner. Uh, whereas the community house is a more revised restriction. Um, this board has seen that agreement before, uh, but based on prior town meeting approvals. So as you may recall from making recommendations to town meeting, um, Diane, I apologize because I don't think you were on the board yet. <laughs> Catherine and Gary, I'm sorry for repeating it. Um, okay. So they needed a revision to the approval that we had provided at the July town meeting last year. Um, because they had submitted the invoices for the work we approved based on the town meeting vote to Hamilton. So they submitted a request to the CPC. The CPC made a revised recommendation to strike some of the language from the prior approval. Um, so now the community house is um, more of a wider scope based on their original application to the CPC for when they applied two years ago instead of a specific item within the scope of that work. Um, so they're pretty pro forma agreements um, and historic preservation restrictions. Um, this is tonight just a first look for any questions or comments from the select board. Um, both the community house and the one in museum have received the agreement and the restriction appropriate to their structure. Um, and I know that the one in museums board is meeting on Thursday for them to review and have any questions or comments. Um, and I've sent everything for the community house to Melissa Elmer and look forward to her notes. Um, so we'll be back on this in June um, with hopefully a, a document that works for all parties. But if you have any questions or other comments, I'd be happy to take those tonight and provide them to the applicants in advance of their um, board meetings. Questions on this? I think we can just take them together if that's okay with everyone. We'll do uh, F and G together. Are there questions? 
General no. Gary? No, I've, uh, both of these went through the whole process of town meeting and so forth. So they've been well uh, reviewed and uh, approved along the way. So ready to move forward. Diane? I as well, I'm all set with those. Okay, so I've read, read, <laughs> read more of these than I ever imagined I would. So I think we're pretty well set. Um, we look forward to seeing what the, you know, the board, the other boards um, think about these. And uh, for us, if in reading through something jumps out, um, we'll, we'll get back to, to Jackie with that. Um, are you thinking that these will come back at our next, uh, on the June 8th meeting? I'm presuming the other boards. Oh, okay. Okay. Anything else on those two items? Okay, so thank you. Just, thank you. Um, so we have a select board policy book update. Update. Mm -hmm. Gary's one of his favorite topics, and I think our only real um, job for tonight is <laughs> the, we have the list that I'm not sure exactly where the list came from. Gary, did you actually generate this entire list of? Of, yes, um, so, uh, I have to give okay. credit to uh, Tom, of course, who uh, has the expertise in all these areas. But yeah, so it was in what last week's uh, meeting packet. Yeah. Yep. And we talked about it. So I think our goal tonight is just to uh, select the top three if we can. Right. And uh, right. see which ones we need to concentrate on first, as obviously this is going to be a, a long haul project. Right. Um, so, do you, do you, so, so how do you want to do this? Well, I'm I was gonna just going to say if try to keep track. If, yeah, if we have, uh, they're numbered one through 12. So if uh, Diane, Catherine, if you just give me your top three and I'll state my three and we'll see if we have uh, overlap <laughs> to begin with and otherwise okay. we can shift. So Diane, do you have some picks? Well, they were all so good, to be honest. Um, I like number six, the annual calendar. Um, and the other one that was my top second was, um, well, it was number four, but the select board and the town administrator relationship finalizing that, but we were gonna wait. So those are my top two. And your top third, maybe? Yeah. Hmm. Any of them would go. All right. Let's go with eight. Eight. All right. Six, four. Periodic eight. reports. Catherine. Okay. Well, to be completely different, um, my <laughs> and and really, this is uh, these first few are for me priorities because of timing, not necessarily, you know, overall long term importance. Um, but I think my the top one for me right now is the number nine, which are appointments to the select mm -hmm. board, um, where that's kind of coming up. Um, the second one that should be the top one, but I think would be my second choice is number one, which is the code of conduct. Um, and why am I not on oh my, sorry, my third must be on the second page. Yeah. Um, and my third, I think is a subset of number 11. I think it's really going to be important and timely for us to um, have some detailed rules on displays of public events uh, outside groups request requests codifying mm -hmm. that uh, again because these things have been coming up so that would be my number I'll just say number 11 so right. aspects of number yeah. 11 would be my third choice well I had uh, looked at it too as the, what has the most time constraint what we really need to focus on and so I had gone with uh, number uh, nine as also the first choice is appointment season is upon us so we ought to have that in place quick and then i had uh, essentially just reversed i had 11 as the public events as that's a constant thing that we need to really settle down and one code of conduct uh, and i just code of conduct i think overall is probably the biggest topic but there's a uh, i think there's a lot of uh, information out there that we need to consolidate before we uh put ours together. So we've got some other towns and so forth. So uh, back to Diane, are you comfortable with uh, yes. working on appointments first? Yes, and the reason I didn't choose that is because I thought the process that 
that I've seen that was supposed to have been done was a, was a pretty good process. And I think sometimes when you try to work on something that needs to be done right away, it kind of gets rushed. So I was, I think it's important and I understand and we can go for that. But I thought if we thought about it later, we'd perfect it the following year. <laughs> so that's uh, yeah, Catherine. Just a comment on that one. Um, it's a, I think that was a policy, the, the policy that we have, I think I was pretty much involved with. Yes. Um, but my, so my view of that is, I agree with you, Diane, I think that works. But I think now that we've used it for a couple of years, it needs, a, it's lacking a few things at the beginning okay. and at the end, perhaps, and needs a little more codifying. Um, so I don't know, Gary, if you agree, but I don't see this one as a complete rewrite as some or, but maybe working on with what we have, but okay. uh, updating it, mm, clarifying it right. a little bit. So um, we'll put uh, number nine in there. And then yeah. uh, Diane's number six, I like too. So maybe uh, nine and 11, the public events and six, the calendar, all kind of uh, timely. Sure. Uh, and we'll do work, continue to work on all the others as well. But uh, some of those uh, may need to uh, wait. I looked at four as well that, you know, that might need discussion with the new town administrator and so forth. So is that okay yeah. with everybody then 9, 11, and 6? Yeah, I think those are good places to start. And I think that'll keep us busy for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. Process-wise, I'm not sure, Gary or Tom, if you have any thoughts on this, but um, rather I'll let, than... I'll let Gary go first as a point of <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking we could share the load a little bit and, you know, rotate which ones we start, sort of start as being authors from. But Gary, I'm open to whatever you've been thinking. <laughs> All right. So I think that uh, either through Tom, you know, if you're the chairman and uh, I can put together drafts for 9-11-6, send them to our expert town administrator, Tom take a look and then he can disseminate them out to the board uh, and uh, that's feedback. Fine. What, uh, what I would like to do is 9 11 and 6 are good you also there you were also were talking about code of conduct conduct and there's a number of good samples that I can put mm -hmm. together on that so if you'd like to make it four and add code of conduct um, on there also that's something where I generally can put that together, send it off the board, and at one of your meetings, you can tweak it, go through what you think is important. But that one won't be that difficult to put together. It just depends on how intense that the board wants or how in depth it wants. But I can, I can put that one together reasonably, pretty easily. All right. So let's call. Some of, okay. Um, I don't have. If, if Tom wants to do some more work i don't have a problem with that I don't know you guys do. all right so but, i see i see the motion has already been updated i assume that's amazing oh, wow thing. so uh the draft motion is moved to select the uh, number one nine eleven and six as the first four policies to move forward with for review at the uh, next uh, select board meeting and we'll see if we can get the that's the motion second thank you just one follow-up on that and this is for the board to think about, no actions required right. today. On the four of them, the one on code of conduct to think about, would you like to make that a town-wide policy versus just a code of conduct for the board, for the select board? Just to think about that yeah. because of all the boards and committees, whether that should be something that might be able to be adopted for all of the above and not just you. It's a, it's a good point. And I'm thinking that about uh, relative to some of these, um, we might want to have um, a little bit of a discussion before we actually see a draft, before someone starts writing a draft. Mm -hmm. I don't, not so sure we have some initial drafts of some of these, but it might be some uh, useful for us to give the author a little thought, a few thoughts, similar to what Gary just said on what's the overall 
goal that we're looking what are the key things so that those can be incorporated in our first draft and maybe we can you know speed those things along um and and i think that if i'm reading the motion or interpreting the motion correctly it says with a review for the next meeting we would begin to review i'm i don't think we're expecting to have right right, right. for policies written for that. Right. <laughs> okay yeah so i'm 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 ready to. Uh, right. Those are all my questions. Is there a, a second for the uh, on the motion? Then I second it. Right. Any further comments? Not Hello. for me. Roll call. Diane. Yes. Catherine. Yes. Gary. Yes. All right. We'll get okay. to work on that. So, okay. Okay. Um, item I on our agenda is vacation carryover requests. Um, let's talk about this a little. It's Diane's um, topic, but let's talk about it a little before we have the motion. And I think um, the memo, which I think is on here, might be. Uh, we talked. We started talking about this last week, but go ahead, Diane. This is your agenda item. Um, right. So we did start to talk about it last week, and um, Tom came up with an idea trying to figure out how to. Um, you know, maybe deal with this without letting everybody take a bunch of time off and close town hall for a couple of weeks there. So, <clears throat> Tom, what did you come up with? Okay, uh, looking at that, it came out to be, if you brought everything down to what the current policy is, is where you can carry over one week, five days, uh, it would cost us slightly over $27,000. And I think looking going forward, at a lot of these positions, you don't fill. You know, it's not like a uh, police officer where if they take a day a week a, a day off the shift, you have to fill them. Mm -hmm. um, the, what I would like to do after getting that calculation is to extend the time that you can take the vacation. Uh, you previously did it for December thirty first last year of two thousand twenty. So if you extended that to December 31st, it would spread it out uh, more so. And uh, we would not take that $27,000 hit. If, I wouldn't think it would be that much because I don't think everybody would take it. But I just think if we expand it out, um, because my goal leaving here is to try to bring your reserves up as much as possible. And so that would be an additional 27,000 that could eventually move into your reserves um, versus transferring into other accounts. So I'm, I'm confused. So- Oh, I'm sorry. Original, so these are vacation requests to roll over. To roll over. And, and so supposedly be used by the end of June, mm -hmm. but we could extend no, it through December yeah, 20. It was originally September, I believe. Yes. And what I would yes. recommend is extend it to December 31st. Of 2020. 21. 2021. Right. Last year you did it. Uh, right. To 20, yeah, 2020, December 31st. I think that's a good idea. Um, I think we've had as much COVID related lack of vacation time. Uh, in this year as we did last year. And I think uh, Gary brought this up again last last week or last week. I, I would be in favor of extending the carryover time through December 31, 2021, just as we go through that discussion. Certainly. And I, I, think, I think this is kind of obvious, but there's going to have to be some coordination and uh, people are, uh, hopefully will, will be patient. Um, some coordination in some departments between who, how many people from a particular department or group are going to, going to take their carryover vacation at the same time. So, um, but we've got a great- We can work it out. People, so I'm sure that can be worked out. Yeah. So I'm sorry, it's my motion. Um, I move that we approve vacation carryover request as presented by the interim town administrator memo by extending the deadline to December 31st, 2021. Gary seconds. Any more uh, discussion? Gary, yeah. 
we didn't hear from Gary. Did you have any comments on that? No, I, I think, you know, extending it out to the end of December Sorry, allows no. everybody a longer time to uh, actually utilize it without impacting each department's schedule. So that should work out okay. Okay. And so good. the vote is Gary? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Diane is yes as well. Okay, I'm flying through this. No now, um, the next item is has to do with town oh, town hall opening timeline. I'm going to assume that we're going to have that discussion after we've had our, the meeting with the Board of Health. Is that a true yeah. statement? Okay, so we're going to postpone item J until um, after that joint meeting, which is on the 27th, or maybe as part of that joint meeting, I guess, but not tonight. Um, other matters, I have nothing else other than to say that I just mentioned our next meeting is the joint meeting with the Board of Health. Um, uh, we're probably not going to have, well, we're going to see, considering that we're in negotiations uh, and we, we're talking about a town administrator, there is the possibility for the insertion of a duly po posted meeting um, at a time that, that works. And there may be one next week. Um, I just, uh, we're thinking about a, a, a Tuesday night meeting for that, but it will not be um, a full select board meeting next Tuesday. It seemed like it was time for everybody to just take a break. Um, those people who have been meeting every week and those people who have been preparing for the meetings every week. So at the moment, um, our meeting next week, if we should have it, will be to discuss um, all matters town administrator. And our next regular meeting is scheduled for June 8th. Um, and then I'm hoping on June 8th, we'll be able to have a little longer look at the, at the uh, frequency of meetings that will bring us right into appointment time. But uh, we have a lot to do before we do with the appointments. So that seem okay? Be okay with that? Yeah. Yes. So I will take, unless someone else, something else they'd like to discuss tonight? No, just a quick question for just a reminder for people to volunteer for the boards and committees and uh, what timeline. I know HDC and some others already have volunteers. What's our proposed timeline to uh, actually start making the appointments? Well, we have a deadline for the letters of interest of, of June 1st. Honestly, um, I personally would like to see us at least have a revised draft of a policy before we start appointing, because as I look at what we have, the gaps that, that we have, um, there's a, there are a lot of appointments to be made and a lot of important ones. So I'm hoping I don't, I'm not anticipating that we will complete our appointments by the end of June, but I'm hoping, well, I'm hoping that uh, at our meeting after June 8th, we should at least be able to, to do some appointments. Um, I think it's, in, I'm backing up a little bit, but I, I think what we haven't talked about is I think it's, it's important, important for everyone to know that they need to express their interest um, by June 1st, and that's a pretty, pretty hard deadline, um, and that there are no, no guarantees of reappointment. Um, but certainly, you know, we're going to, we want to have a fair process, which um, is an issue in the community right now. So I think maybe we'll have to look at that policy a little to ensure that fair process part. And then um, at our meeting after the 8th, maybe we can start doing the um, appointments. I'm actually expecting that they won't be completed until mm, in July sometime based on past experience and how many we have. So that's the way I'm seeing it. So if I could just clarify for myself, everyone whose term has been is expiring was sent a letter or an Correct. email, email which I believe Thank was you, an Jeff. email. Mm -hmm. um, and were the chairs or the department heads of those committees also informed so that they touched base with that member? I just don't want to because a lot of people that, you know, we haven't, they don't might not understand that it's not understood that they're going to get reappointed and maybe they were not 
totally aware of that. Hi, Jackie. I'm sure. Yeah, I, I will just, uh, I'm going to let that, I, definitely, Jackie, want to hear from you on this, but this, this part of it is not exactly new. This is a policy, the process yep. we've used before. Um, the clarification on, you know, what the appointments are going to be uh, or how they're going to be done is not, but go ahead, Jackie. I just wanted to say, I'm sorry, all of the letters, they went out via email on um, Thursday and between the emails I've received back and the people who have utilized the renewal via the Google form, um, I am not having any concerns about people having received those. There are a couple folks that I know are not email, ex like excited by email that I will be probably reaching out to in the next couple of days. I would say that we've gotten a good response so far um, from our incumbents, um, for lack of a better word. So people seem to have given the message. Um, and if there's someone in particular, you know, I know of a couple people that still submit a hand letter um, and we've gotten those from those folks. So I'm happy to do more follow-up if the board would like that. Um, but I would say that we've gotten a good response thus far for our June 1 deadline. I'm happy. Don't do anything extra. That sounds perfect. Thank you. And I'm hoping that people are paying attention and, and um, that there will be some, you know, other some people in general that are interested, not just the incumbents. I'm not looking to necessarily re replace anyone, but there may be some people who, if someone else came forward, they'd be happy to, you know, stand aside. Um, and I think it's important for people to, to know that. So uh, anyway, but yes, they have gotten their letters. Anything Thank else? You. If not, I will take a motion to adjourn this meeting. Is there a Second. motion to adjourn? I'll, I'll move it. Diane seconds it. Um, roll call, Diane? Yes. Gary? Yes. Catherine? Yes. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time. Um, have a, a, I guess, well, I guess we'll see you all Thursday night. I won't wish you a happy weekend yet. <laughs> we have one more meeting this week. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. We're adjourned. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Catherine Harrison, can you hang on for a sec? I can. <laughs>